Hey, welcome back to Global Environment. Uh, last time we were together, we talked about the global heat engine. And, and when we were talking about the global heat engine, we saw how energy comes to the Earth system and how it's distributed around the Earth system. And really through that, we saw how temperature and moisture gradients are created on the planet. And we'll review a little bit of that coming up. So we really set the stage on how the abiotic or non-biotic uh, components of the earth look like. And I just wanted to bring up some vocabulary again. I just said the word gradients. Now you, you, you've got to write that down, you've got to learn that, love it, the whole, the whole nine. What is a gradient? A gradient is a change in environmental conditions over time or space. And I'll give you an example. There can be gradients of light. Like in this room, it's kind of darker over here and then it gets lighter, lighter, lighter. So that that's a gradient of light from dark to more light and you know everything in between. You can have gradients in temperature. It might be colder near a window and then get warmer near a heater. Everything in between, that's a gradient. Um, you can have gradients in moisture and those are really important because those gradients, those important environmental gradients were set up by the global heat engine. So let's, let's look at some slides. Okay, we're going to talk about biomes and what's interesting here is, is, is biomes respond to those non-living gradients. The living environment responds. So we're going to see how that occurs and what, are, what, what happens, how to, how to, what are the results of that. So what are the factors that control the plant type that grows in a particular area? Think about that. And which are the most important? Okay. Now, some of the most important are temperature and precipitation, but also insulation or sunlight. And if we look at this, this is called a Whitaker diagram. Um, you can see gradients graphed out here. In this case, precipitation on the x-axis, and uh, on the y-axis you see temperature. And what you see within here are different types of biomes. Okay, and we'll, we'll talk about what biomes are in a little bit, but you, you get an idea just from looking at the names, like uh, boreal forest, tundra, tropical uh, rainforest. Um, a biome is a very large area that is characterized by dominant vegetation patterns or climate patterns. And you can see each set of gradient conditions um, has its own type of biome, which pre predominates. Uh, you know, this is kind of an average. Okay. Now let's get back to the picture of the old earth. You know, this is global environment. You know, again, um, you see the wind patterns. We've talked about the, the, the patterns of uh, currents. We have uh, cloud patterns. We have the resulting rain patterns. We have temperature gradients. And these all play out and create the biomes that we, we're going to talk about. And again, you, you can see some of the evidence of this. You can see some deserts here. You can see some darker regions, which you know that have uh, more forests. There's tropical rainforests in here, grasslands here, and, and they are set up by the global heat engine. Okay, so here, here's a cartoon that shows some of those major biomes we saw in the Whitaker diagram uh, spatially on a map. And, you know, what do you see? What do you see? You see the different types of biomes with different colors, but how about the, the spatial arrangement? Think about that for a second. Do you see any patterns? Well, you, you might see that, to a large extent, take tundra here, it, it follows patterns of latitude. And you can see that often with deserts as well, uh, where the tropical rainforests are. It's not 100%, but again, this has a lot to do with those Hadley cells and other convection currents we talked about, and some of the differences that break up the, the pattern that we see are due to things like ocean currents and also orographic effect, which we talked about. Okay, here, here's the patterns of moisture that we can see on the globe. Again, these follow temperature gradients. We have ice here, uh, more rainy areas, desert regions, and you see that latitudinal pattern. Again, following Hadley cells and other convection currents. Okay, so again, quick review. Hadley cell uh, are the convection currents you find right around the equator. And we said that right around the equator you get the most intense sunlight. This drives the Hadley cell because that, those air parcels near the equator expand, 
move upwards, drop rain, there you got tropical rainforest, and move over, they're drier, they descend, they warm up, now you get those deserts. You can see how this is driving biomes. And deserts, again, 30 degrees north and south of the equator. And you can see the other convection cells. We've got the Hadley cells here, but there's also the feral cell and the sometimes existing polar cell. These are moving the energy. They're moving the temperature, setting the temperature gradients. They're also moving the rainfall. And if we look at, uh, this is called an NDVA vegetation index. This is uh, uh, from satellite de uh, data that uh, measures chlorophyll. Again, you can see where are the regions that have the greatest production, uh, often in the tropics. So again, this, this would suggest some areas are very constrained, like the desert regions, by water. Some are constrained by temperature, and other ones by sunlight. Uh, and we'll, we'll get into individual uh, biomes and some, some of the restrictions you see on them in just a bit. So we're going to stop here. Uh, some of the following clips talk about individual biomes. Uh, take good notes, again, because you, you want to pick up some of the major features of these biomes and why they're important. All right, see you next time.